It's become more important lately that we stay connected regardless of where we are in our RV. I have absolutely no cell phone service up here. Yep. I got nothing. For that reason, I recently splurged and picked up a um, mobile booster. And I've uh, been looking at these for a while and I decided to get one of these new units that just hit the market. It's the uh, Drive 4GX from WeBoost, you know, formerly Wilson Electronics. So I've been spending a lot of time, you know, obviously initially getting it set up and I got to register it with Verizon and uh, go through all those steps. And I've also been driving around and doing a lot of interesting testing to see what I could get out of this booster. I'm going to share a lot of that information with you. It's some real interesting stuff. So stick around and don't go anywhere. Okay, so I ended up getting this uh, WeBoost uh, 4GX off of Amazon. It was a bit spendy at uh, around $450, so that's what I mean when I said I splurged. Um, but I tend to keep things forever, so if this really works out for me, I plan on using it for many, many years. In the box itself uh, comes the, uh, the booster itself, so it's kind of a heavy, uh, sturdy unit, and uh, it's got four lights on it. Uh, to indicate the different bands that it's listening for. There's a power adapter that comes with it. It's a DC 12 volt power adapter that actually converts down to six volts, I believe. And uh, the nice thing I like about it is that it has a little on off switch on the uh, plug itself. So it will plug into like a DC receptacle, like a cigarette lighter sort of receptacle. Uh, it's designed for use in a car. So that's why it's a uh, 12 volt like that. And uh, the other things that it comes with are two antennas. One is the external antenna, which is a small, it's about five inches uh, high. It's an omnidirectional antenna that's designed to uh, stick to a magnetic or metallic surface. So it's uh, magnetic, it'll stick on the top of your car or to some sort of metal surface. And I'll talk more about how I had to come up with something for the RV since it doesn't have a metal roof. The other antenna is the internal antenna that uh, transmits, retransmits the signal inside your RV. Uh, and it, they call this like the candy bar antenna because it looks kind of like a Hershey bar. When you get the booster, the first thing you have to do is to register it with your carrier. In my case, Verizon uh, makes this pretty easy. Uh, despite what I had read online, people had some really tough experiences trying to get it registered. I found that not to be the case. I just went online and uh, Googled um, registering Verizon signal booster, and it took me right to a link where I could uh, go there, sign in, and just enter you know, a few pieces of basic information like the model number, the uh, serial number of the unit, and the FCC ID, and it actually registered the booster right there for me. I let it sit for about a day before I actually tried to use it. I'd be interested if somebody's out there using AT&T, what, the, uh, what the registration process is like for AT&T or the other providers. Um, so yeah, if you have uh, experience or know what that's like, please uh, share what that is in the comments for the rest of us. So I wanna show you quickly how I mounted the uh, booster inside my RV. Now I ended up running all the wires for the antennas and everything into this storage overhead cabinet here and uh, I mounted the booster itself right to the side wall. So in order to power it I needed uh, 12 volt power so I ran and wired up this uh, receptacle here and I hooked it into one of my existing nearby light fixtures. So the power for the booster just runs along the back here. Um, I might clean this up at some point and then uh, you know, the power cord can plug right in there to the booster. Now the antenna that goes to the outside, uh, it's mounted on top of the RV on top of a uh, vent cover. The vent cover itself is right here. Wire actually runs down inside the uh, 
frame there and and runs along this uh, this uh, strip right there that kind of hides the wires. Now the internal antenna actually comes out right there and runs down into a hole right there that can run down. It's kind of hidden right here. Runs down next to my window along here and here's the internal antenna right here that I have velcroed with a little bit of slack so I could move it around if I have to. Now the way I really use it is uh, to get the best signal I put a little velcro strip on the back of my phone here so I can just take this antenna and stick it on the back of my phone and then when I use it I, I know I'm always getting the best possible signal because it's attached right to the back of the phone. That's how I have it set up inside the RV. Now, as I was testing uh, the booster, I really wanted to be able to get a true indication of what my current signal was that I was receiving at the time. And, you know, once I turned on the booster, you know, how much of a boost was I getting? So I couldn't necessarily just rely on the uh, bars on the phone that indicated signal strength. I wanted to actually see the decibel um, value of the signal strength. Now on an Android phone, this is pretty easy to see. Uh, you simply go to the settings and then select, I think, more uh, option and then go to your about phone menu option. And then within there, there is a, uh, a selection for status. And that'll give you the uh, true uh, decibel signal strength reading that you can measure. Now on an iPhone, this is a little bit different. You have to actually put your phone into field test mode. Now to put an iPhone into field test mode, you simply dial asterisk 3001 pound 12345 pound asterisk and then press send. And then that'll put you into a screen that uh, gives you some options for field test mode. But what you'll also see as soon as you do that is that the signal level indication at the top will turn into a decibel value as opposed to your signal strength bars. So that's how you can see what your actual signal strength is on an iPhone. And just press the uh, send button again and it'll return back to normal mode. And when you're looking at a decibel signal strength on a 4G signal, the first thing that uh, you'll note is that the value, the decibel value, is a negative number. Now I'm not going to go into too much detail as to why that is. All you really need to know is the closer that number is to zero, the stronger your signal is. A really good signal is going to range, you know, between negative 65, negative 75 dB. So that level of a signal is really good. It's going to give you about four or five bars on your phone. Now a really bad signal is around 150, negative 115 dB, you know, even 100, negative 110-ish. Um, you know, your signal is going to start to get pretty bad. Uh, you know, it gets up beyond that, you're going to start dropping calls and things like that. And especially when you're talking data, if you're using your data services, you know, you're going to get a really bad data connection. Now I'm usually able to get about a 40 dB boost out of this signal booster, uh, regardless of where I'm at. Even out here in the middle of the desert. Uh, we are in the um, Mojave National Preserve, which is kind of near the southern Nevada border, but uh, we pretty much have no signal out here, a very faint signal. Yep, I got nothing. Nada. With the booster on, you know, I'm able to get a 40 to 44 dB boost, and you know, my bars on my phone jump up to like five, so I'm almost maxed out. Now with the booster connected, I'm able to go from absolutely no signal up here to full bars, so full strength on my 4G at uh, negative 76 dB, which gives me a great data signal and uh, lets me stream video and upload videos to YouTube and do everything I need to do, as well as keep in touch with folks. But that's not always the case, uh, like when we went up to Mount Rainier. 
Okay, right now we're up here at uh, Mount Rainier. I'm in the parking lot now. We just went for a little hike. And uh, I just noticed that I have absolutely no cell phone service up here on my phone. So I thought it would be a great place to test the Wii Boost. So I'm going to go ahead and turn it on and uh, see if we can get anything. All right, I thought I'd give it a try. Uh, turns out, even with the booster up here in the middle of the mountains, um, we didn't get nothing. So uh, even with the booster on, nothing. So I guess it's uh, nothing from nothing leaves. <laughs> nothing. <laughs> Another interesting thing that I found was that uh, the level of boost that I would get would actually vary um, depending upon the time of day. Um, and you know I don't know other factors one of the uh, things I really wanted to test was what kind of boost I could get here at home where my RV is parked because we really have a poor 4G signal so right now in the RV I'm uh, sitting at negative 108 dB of signal strength so now with the uh, signal boosted it's uh, down to negative 73 dBm, which is a pretty good signal. One time I got 50 dB of boost, but uh, I found that that's not the norm. Usually it's about 40 dB. Now I mentioned earlier that the booster came with this really small omnidirectional magnetic antenna. And uh, it seemed to be working okay. But I wondered if I could get a bigger antenna, that if the bigger antenna would, uh, you know, give me a better boost. Well, it turns out I have an existing big omnidirectional antenna that I've mounted on top of my RV uh, for picking up Wi-Fi signals using my uh, Wi-Fi extender. And I wanted to see if I could hook that up to the booster. And because it's a bigger antenna, you know, if I could get a bigger boost. What I found was that it actually gave me a worse boost. You know, I, the maximum I could get out of it was maybe a negative or maybe a 20 dB boost out of it. The antenna that came with the, uh, the signal booster really worked the best. Even though it was small, it uh, provided the best result. So ended up not using the big one. And so in this case, bigger really is not better. So using the antenna that came with it um, on an RV is a little bit uh, different from its intended use. Uh, it's designed to be used on a car uh, and uh, so it's, it's magnetic. So you can stick it on the roof of your car and it actually sticks really well. But uh, turns out it needs that metal grounding plate, in this case the roof of your car, to help receive and, and uh, accept these signals. without being on a metal surface it just doesn't work properly so I contacted uh, WeBoost and asked for their recommendation as to what kind of metal surface would be the best to give you the best signal boost you know out of this antenna and their recommendation was essentially that uh, you know any um, steel plate would be best so you know within four to five inches of diameter is what they recommended would work just fine. Now, I tried three different things uh, to see if uh, perhaps again, bigger was better. If uh, I had a bigger metal surface, would that give me a better boost? Uh, or would the smaller one give me a weaker boost? What I found was that they all performed about the same. So it didn't really matter if I had a big fat piece of metal or uh, a small piece of metal uh, in this case this steel plate um, or this the results were all the same so it didn't really matter what I had what I ended up using was kind of a variation of this smaller plate that I mounted to the top of my RV on my um, my vent cover for now works pretty good What I wanted to do with the internal antenna was actually put it in kind of a central location and uh, that would be able to feed, you know, other uh, cell phones or other, you know, mobile devices. Now after some testing I was a little bit bummed in terms of the, uh, the range of this internal antenna. What I discovered was that really the best signal you're going to get 
is to actually put your phone or mobile device right next to that antenna and essentially touching. Uh, I use Velcro and uh, that's how you're going to get the best possible boosted signal out of this booster. Simply moving your phone a foot away, I noticed you know your, D, your dB boost drops by you know 10, even 20 dB sometimes. So just a foot away, it really starts to degrade. So it's already up to 70, 77, 81, 84, 88, about 80, 91, 90, negative 95. So I'm only about a foot and a half away from the antenna and I've already lost you know over 20 dB of my boosted signal so yeah definitely what you're gonna have to do to get the best possible signal when you're out is to keep the phone as close as possible to the internal antenna if not attached to it now I contacted WeBoost uh, customer support about the uh, range of the internal antenna that came with the uh, 4GX. Yeah, they said that's kind of a that's just within the specs. Um, but they did recommend that there is another um, uh, antenna that you could buy as an upgrade that uh, had a a better range. And uh, I'll put a link to that antenna um, below in the description. Uh, if you want to check it out. I may actually upgrade to one of those, but right now I'm still using the uh, antenna that came with it, the, the they call the candy bar antenna. And whenever I use it for data or whatever on my phone, I simply just um, use the Velcro and I put a little Velcro strip on the back of my phone and I use that uh, to get the best possible signal I can. Well, that's uh, been my experience so far with this WeBoost uh, 4GX booster and I hope you guys enjoyed the video maybe got something out of this I know um, some of you might even be considering getting one of these and I wanted to make sure that I got this video out for you in case uh, you wanted more information so I'm looking forward to using it some more and actually doing some more testing in more fringe areas uh, as we head out and boondock some more or hit the back roads because that's really why I got it, was to be able to stay connected uh, when we're in areas where the signal is really poor. And uh, I will certainly report back you know, with those results and our experiences as we get out more and uh, put it to the test. If you guys have uh, specific questions regarding how I've set it up in the RV or whatever, feel free to ask and I will certainly update information as I change things around. But. Until next time, you know, you guys have a good time RVing out there and uh, take care.